Yo gamers, it's me, Golden12, back with another Hunger Star video. Today I'm going to talk about everything Break. Break is a underutilized stat and it's going to be very important in the future and that's why I'm making this video, right? It's a mini stat the players don't understand and I'm going to explain everything involving it and how it works and why it's going to be important for you and your damage, especially when building mini characters and potential future break based characters with ever evolving landscape such as you know this game itself with its you know new characters defying the meta update after update uh and the fact that hoyer versus decide to implement you know break scaling in a couple characters kits i think it's time that somebody finally covers this in depth and has a pretty good video explaining how it works right break has a lot of differences with each element right because each element has its own resulting effect and that is not the same thing as the actual break itself and well i've yet to see anybody else cover this so i'm gonna do it <clears throat> stick with me as i explain everything because it's gonna get a little complicated because i'm gonna have to show formulas just so that everybody understands what exactly is happening to result in a specific amount of damage so try not to freak out when i start showing charts and everything i'll try to make it as simple as possible for everybody to understand as always, if you like the video, like it, share it, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Check me out on Twitch, and let's get into it. In order to fully understand how break works, I need to cover multiple things first, starting with the toughness bar. In this game, every enemy has a set amount of toughness that does not change, currently based on any other modifiers. This stat is only applied to enemies specifically, displayed above the HP bar. When attacking an enemy, if they are weak to that element that they are being attacked to, the character will deplete a portion of the toughness bar. Once it is fully depleted, they will suffer multiple following effects. Deals an instance of break damage, delays the enemy action by 25%, and has a 150 base chance to apply the corresponding debuff for that element. Funny thing about this is that means base chance actually affects the chance that you have to apply this effect on the enemy whenever you pick a target. Not that you would be building effect hit rate, but that is something that is important to note. Upon the enemy's next turn, they will fully recover from being weakness broken and regain the toughness bar. When looking at the damage equation for this game, if enemies are not weakness broken, damage is multiplied by 0.9, meaning they take 10% less damage than they otherwise would have. Whenever they are broken, this multiplier goes to 0.1, which means they no longer have this universal 10% damage reduction. This 10% damage reduction does stack with other sources of damage reduction look at the dinos for example those are very annoying enemies who get extra damage reduction when they are not weakness broken so after talking about the toughness bar i will now be talking about toughness value and damage as stated previously enemies in this game have different amounts of toughness the toughness amount is always a multiple of 30. this is sometimes to refer to as one unit of toughness so in case you're looking at somewhere else or referring to somebody else's counts of it it's a 1 to 30 ratio different character skills will deal various amounts of toughness damage for example most basic attacks deal 30 toughness skills 60 and some ultimates 90 while a character like shoihi does 120 toughness on her ultimate you can you can't see these values in game so you have to look at a third party website to see how much toughness it does in terms of e units Attacking an enemy in overworld will deal 30 toughness damage to all targets of that respective element that they are weak to. Currently, all attacking techniques deal 60 toughness damage. Some enemies like Yang Ching or Sam have the ability to make themselves immune to toughness damage for a duration. The equation for the amount of toughness damage you do is as follows. Base toughness damage multiplied by 1 plus toughness damage increase multiplied by 1 plus weakness break efficiency multiplied by 1 plus break effect efficiency attack tag this last stat is currently nowhere to be found in game it's just something in the files and how the damage is calculated i wouldn't worry about this last one currently and as of recording this video our only source of weakness break efficiency is from runmei yukong for example just has a toughness damage percent as her basic so this means it multiplies with the weakness break efficiency now onto weakness break each element has its own different elemental effect whenever you break a target. Depending on that type of break, the base damage of the break and the debuff applied will differ. The base damage is calculated like so. The element multiplier multiplied by the level multiplier multiplied by the max toughness multiplier. The max toughness multiplier is equal to 0.5 plus the max toughness of the target you are attacking divided by 120. The level multiplier increases per the attacker's level. The higher the level, the higher the level multiplier, the higher the base break damage will be. So in order to maximize your break damage, you're going to want the character to be level 80. Each element has its own debuff whenever you break the target. That also scales differently. For physical, it is bleed. This will be a percentage of the target's max HP and is capped based on the level multiplier and the max toughness multiplier. 
For fire, lightning, and ice, burn, freeze, and shock respectively, they are multiplied by their elemental multipliers exclusively. Freezing of which will have the additional effect of skipping the opponent's current turn and advancing forward their next action by 50%. For wind, they apply wind shear. This is based on the stack count of the wind shear and the level multiplier. Wind shear applies one stack for normal enemies and three stacks for bosses and elites. For quantum, it is entanglement. It is by its multiplier, by its stack count, and by the toughness multiplier. Entanglement also delays the enemy's action by 20% multiplied by one plus to your break effect, and it stacks every time you hit up to five stacks. For imaginary, it applies imprisonment. This has no debuff damage, however, it does delay the enemy's action by 30% multiplied by 1 plus your break effect. Additionally, it will also slow the target by 10%. To calculate for break damage and break dot is as follows. Damage is equal to base damage multiplied by 1 plus your break effect multiplied by the defense multiplier, multiplied by the res multiplier, multiplied by the vulnerability multiplier, and by the broken multiplier. Break and its resulting effects are not multiplied by any other character stats such as crit or attack. Damage as such cannot crit or receive anything from damage percent bonuses. So basically the only thing you can do to increase your break damage outside of debuffs is going to be increasing the break effect stat. The only way to increase break damage is through things that affect enemy stats, whether it be buffs or debuffs, primarily debuffs. The stats that matter for this damage are defense, Elemental Resistance, Damage Taken, and the Universal Damage Reduction Multi. The Weakened Multiplier, as stated, does not matter in the current state of the game. Buffs like Defense Penetration and Res Penetration will all allow you to do more break damage, while debuffs like Defense Down, Res Penetration, and Vulnerability will allow you to also do more damage. Notable characters of this are Welt, Gwenyphon, Ruan Mei, and Pella. Now that I've covered the basics of break and how it works and how you finance damage, I'll now be talking about characters focused on break. At time of recording, the only characters in game that are focused on break are Ruan Mei, Shui He, and Gallagher. Understanding how break works is important for characters that are focused around it. Currently, break can only be found on specific set pieces, planars, or break ropes. It can also be found as a substat on any piece. Like all substats, if the main stat is that stat, then the piece cannot roll it as a substat, so you cannot get a break rope with a break substat. Due to how break scales based on the enemy's toughness bar, this means that break gets stronger the stronger the enemy is. This will significantly change the output for anyone who is building break for that specific enemy element. It's important to keep in mind that you could build break on any of your supports to have them deal additional damage, but break only matters if they are the one breaking or it's their talent doing break percent damage. Using Gallagher as an example, one of the new characters who scales break via having him break the target will deal massive amounts of damage versus if you were to break the target with someone who did not build break effect. The character's potential to break of course can be increased via break efficiency bonuses like Ron May's skill. Now that I've yapped about all that, I'll now be talking about why you may possibly want this as a last stat on some of your builds over something like effect res which traditionally would be more impactful for uptime reasons. Now, after covering all this break stuff, I'm sure a lot of people are questioning break as potential for many builds on current characters, newer or old characters, or if there's even a possibility to run this as an additional stat on your DPS. Due to how break functions and the characters who will be breaking, and of course, it is not a bad additional stat to have on a DPS. However, it's really hard to say you want this as a trade-off over, uh, as a trade-off on DPS characters over other stats when they're already so stat heavy to begin with. Many of them want multiple crit stats, attack stats, or if you're a dot character, effect hit rate stats, with most characters wanting speed stats. It's hard to fit in additional break in the builds, unless of course you're focusing on a break build itself, but even then it's hard to say that you really want to do something like this, or that you should full send supports with something like this with the current landscape of the game. This may matter though going forward if we do ever get other characters that buff based on, you know, break effect scaling. Plus, it's also arguable that having effect res is more beneficial so that you don't get debuffs applied to you mid battle. Having a little break is nice to add to your overall damage but you will be losing a potential resist for a debuff like I've already said and keeping your character in the fight. However at the same time this means break is really good in modes like pure fiction as you're able to build towards it and get a set amount to easily clear out a set of mobs. For example break Argenti killing everybody or using a AoE character who is going to 
likely break within a couple attacks and deal a bunch of damage and clear out a wave. So what does this all mean? Break effect has been an increasingly more relevant stat as characters get it, get it added to their kits. It's something you should probably be looking out for in builds or as an additional stat for your current characters. Many players would have most likely just trashed the pieces or not even build characters, but this is something that you're going to want to start thinking about moving forward. Eventually the time will come when we'll most likely get a 5 star DPS that scales off break effect. Okay, so there's a bit more to the video that I'm going to add at the end and I hopefully won't make it too long. Of course, if you liked, please subscribe. That'd be, you know, much appreciated and check me out on Twitch. Um, but here is my break calculator that I use for a lot of the video to explain stuff. Uh, it takes in all the enemy stats and damage and plugs it in and outputs the damage you want to look for, right? So, yeah, I'm just going to give out my thoughts here and try to keep everything short and simple. Uh, this was just going to add on to the very end of it so you guys get more context and more info and uh, all that stuff, just so in case you don't miss anything. So then, uh, as I said, each element has its own thing. <clears throat> There are certain elements that uh, work pretty much better as support elements, right? That being ice, quantum, and imaginary. Imaginary allowing you to imprison for a lot and reduce their speed. Quantum allowing you to, you know, delay a lot as well and uh, give you a bunch of damage. And freeze allowing you to get double like DOT procs and stuff like that. So it will be pretty nice running, getting uh, support characters with those elements as to where the other elements being fire, physical, wind. <clears throat> and lightning they're better off for dps elements now as we all know or should know break is pretty much the strongest uh you know break damage type because bleed damage is a percent of you know the boss's hp right and so that will scale really well going into different you know end game even at a 300 toughness and again just like the unknown meme which is 720 toughness you can see the damage goes up a lot because as i said uh break damage is based on the amount of toughness damage are the amount of toughness the enemy has, right? Let me make that clear. Uh, the basic way to order this is physical, wind, fire, uh, lightning for like the damage ones. Lightning is kind of the weakest, even though it does have higher dot damage, its base break is very low. And well, if you're fighting an elite enemy, then the dot damage from wind shear is gonna be more. So that's just sort of how it is. Now, if you go up higher in toughness amounts, fire does technically beat the net damage of uh, wind, but wind works better for, you know, dot teams because you have higher dot damage, right? So there's a reason for that. And then obviously bleed is crazy strong, right? And quantum needs to stack up to five times to get this extra damage number over here on the right. And so there is that, right? Um, as I've said, the level increases the amount of break you do, uh, your toughness damage in case you guys didn't understand that is based on whatever the original attack is, right? So for like a skill, it's going to be, uh, 30, right? Uh, let's, or sorry, for a skill, it's going to be at 60 most of the time. Basic's 30. But let's say it's a skill, right? Or if you're Boot Hill in this case, you have an enhanced basic, you're doing 60. Boot Hill is going to be able to build up to 150% toughness damage increase. This multiplies with Run Maze to make him have one of the highest single hits of toughness in the game, right? Being 225. This is more than Shuehi's ultimate. So that's a lot of toughness damage with one basic attack, right? Uh, the Harmony MC that will be coming out after this video releases is also going to be able to do the same thing at higher Eidolon levels. So that's going to be pretty impressive, right? Uh, in case, again, you didn't understand, break damage increases based on your break effect and then however you, you know, modify the enemy stats, right? Via res pin, defense down, you know, stats like that or vulnerability, right? And then obviously, like I said in the video, resist plays a huge part of it. It kind of tanks your damage. Uh, that dinosaur is very, very annoying. And then weaken doesn't have anything to do with it. Uh, and again, bleed does cap out at a certain level, but you can get a lot of damage through uh, the lead, right? Because it's a percent of the boss's uh, HP. Um, another thing of note, well, uh, you can see the multipliers here plugged in, right? For amount of damage taken. You've seen the screenshot a couple times in the video. Uh, but another thing of note is how it, like, it works in turn order. So this game is a very specific way in terms of like activation order for things. And break damage, the reason why I have this is weakness broken here is because break damage gets reduced by 10% of what it's supposed to do. Or I guess I wouldn't say intended to because it's intended to work like this, but it gets reduced by 10% because the damage happens as they are broken and not after they are broken, right? So it gets reduced a little bit than what you might think it uh, would actually do. And that's why I'm, I'm saying this because Ruin Maze talent where it does break damage when they're broken happens 
after they're broken, right? It, hopefully this makes sense. So when you break them, they take the damage immediately, and then Rune May's talent triggers and does her damage. So she gets that extra 10%, so she's doing like normal damage to them. Well, I, I hope that makes sense, but that's basically how Rune May's thing does. And because they are weakness broken, Rune May's ultimate right re-breaking them is going to do the same thing it's going to do like full damage because it's not being reduced by them not being broken and the not being weakness broken thing does matter because if they're not weakness broken well then the dot damage is going to do less right obviously i mean that's that's kind of the the whole point there um for a character like boot hill who stacks up over time he's gonna really enjoy these debuffs for the targets right because it's gonna allow him to do a lot more damage because obviously, again, this is the only way you can increase break. You can't increase break damage uh, from crit or um, uh, damage percent buffs, right? It has to be the other stuff, the debuffs, right? So that's important to know. As you can see, Boot Hill's damage, very, very high um, with all the buffs active. There's a lot of buffs going on here. I've got like E1 Rune May active, you know, with some res penetration and, or sorry, with some additional defense down and stuff like that. So it's going to get really high uh, with a lot of break. And then for MC, the MC is going to split a portion of their break and give it to everybody else. And they're going to do super break damage, which as far as my understanding does work on the same rules or the damage increases are the same as regular break damage. However, the difference here is, as you can see in the multiplier, it doesn't care about the enemy's toughness amount. It cares about what the attack does for toughness damage. So a character like Gallagher on his enhanced basic, or again, Boot Hill on his enhanced basic, are going to do even more damage with the MC and their team, right? So that's sort of like a thing there. And I'll do a separate video on this stuff talking about it, but I just want to put this stuff in the video just to give more context. And in case you guys want to, uh, you know, ask any other questions. I don't want to make this too long. It's already getting really long. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time and peace out.